here today with another uh, Link Plus NAS. This is their link station into, you've probably already seen Jeff Gearling's video on this. And right out of the gate, I just want to give a disclaimer. Jeff Gearling mentioned someone in the video and he says they had an issue where, uh, let me remember how to do this here. There we go. How one of these came off. I am that person. Now they did tell me this is an engineering sample. I've been back and forth with them on it um, before he even filmed his video. And they said they've fixed this issue. So I can't remove that 2.5 until I epoxy this back on. As you can see, it just had a little bit of glue. Again, I just wanna get that out of the way. This is an engineering sample, so it's a little bit different than the actual unit that's going out to consumers. But even if I did need to fix that, like it looks like they use some kind of super glue. I could just put a dab of epoxy on there, push that back on there, and then I can remove that drive. That did not happen on this one. So it's just this 2.5 bay. And I just wanted to go ahead and get that out of the way. But yeah, if you wondered who that was in Jeff Gearling's video, that was me. Now this is a six bay NAS. It has these two 2.5s. And then if you flip it over, it does have room for um, four of the um, NVMe SSDs. And I just took some from many PCs that I had that were pretty lower spec and I threw them in here. And then I threw two 2.5 SSDs in here that I got from Go Hard Drives. This does come diskless, but you can do up to six, eight terabyte drives for 48 terabytes in total between the NVMe and the two and a half SATA base. This has an Intel N100. It's an Alder Lake in, in it. It is a four core, two gigahertz with a 3.4 gigahertz burst. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM on its own. We'll, when we go in, we'll look, but I think I added another stick myself just because I had it. I harvested it from a, uh, a mini PC and I just decided to throw it in there. It does have one 10 gigabit ethernet port on the back. It has three USB A's, one of them's 3.2 and the other's 2.0. It has the HDMI and then it has a three and a half millimeter audio jack. This one's USB-C, I think. Yeah, there it is. There's USB-C right there on the front. You can see all that stuff too on Jeff Gearling's video. Now, Jeff Gearling went in and put something else on it. I went ahead and left the OS that comes with it because I just like it. He did his own thing. So if you want to see that, you can go over there. Uh, he did a much better video. Now it supports Android, Linux, Windows VMs. It's got hardware pass through. What I've been using this for is my Plex server. We're just gonna say that I've been watching my own archived videos from my YouTube channel on my Plex server, and we'll leave it at that. Now, you can put TrueNAS on here. I think that's maybe what Jeff put on, I don't remember, but I'm pretty happy with, with um, I'm pretty happy with Unraid. Unraid was my first experience with NASes, and I have it on most of them. There is another NAS I'm testing right now that I'm gonna try to put Unraid on because that company has some garbage on there. So I really like that it does come with the uh, Unraid. I believe it comes with a one-year license too in the box. Uh, I just went ahead and paid for my own license just so I could get the billing set up. Okay, I forgot to look in the box for the uh, piece of paper, but you know, <laughs> whatever, check the box. It might be in there, might not. They could change that in the future. But you can like host VMs on this, Docker apps, do smart home automations, use it as like a central file, use it as a central file server with like automatic backups, all those apps that are supported by um, Unraid. And then if you did something else like TrueNAS or whatever, it may actually be preloaded with an Unraid license. Let me get a monitor. I've not actually tried to just go into one of these from a monitor. So I'm real curious to see what that looks like. And we'll kind of stumble through that together. I'm just going to use one of my portable monitors and we'll slide this behind it. And then hopefully my keyboard and mouse just work fine. So here we see it doing its booting up. Try to get you a little better view here. This portable monitor is, you know, not the greatest, but I don't want to have to drag a monitor out here. And I have things going on in my office that uh, you can't see yet. So, yeah. So there we are. Once you get into that and you log in, you just do slim and then Unraid will come up. It's only my username and password again, so let me do that off camera. I've gone ahead and done that. And there we are. This is exactly what you'll see in a browser. I'm sorry about the resolution. I don't know why it's this super tiny one. Well, I guess that's just the resolution we get when we go to it from the machine itself. So I'm gonna take a handheld. But you can see here, it's just a typical Unraid and I've got two two terabyte disks. One is parity, and then one I'm just losing a terabyte to. Um, they didn't have one terabyte disks on GoHDD at the time I bought them, so I just bought the two. 
and then I throw all these one terabyte sticks in that I had taken from mini PCs. And I've just got it set up as network storage. Um, that's what I wanted to do with this one. I've you, you can do various kinds of RAID, but I am just using them as storage. Nothing on here is going to be missed if it's lost. So yeah, that's what I'm doing. And you can see it's just filling that first drive first and the rest are available. Now, I may play with this in the future and put in some RAID modes, but it's on RAID, so it's going to act pretty much the same always, especially on these Link Pluses. You know, I've got one set up in RAID in the other room using HDDs, but it's, it's a pretty great little thing. And I will say it does make some fan noise here. Let me get the mic closer. Um, if the TV's not on, I can hear that. I can hear that from across the room. I can hear that from 20 feet away. It's not annoyingly loud, but it is kind of, it does make noise. So if you got the TV going, I actually have this setting behind the TV. I set it over there by that PlayStation. Once the TV's on, I don't even notice it, but it, it works pretty great for what I'm using it for. And I'm happy with the other one I have too. I've had it for about two months now. I've had this one for about a month and maybe a little bit longer. Maybe I've had the other one closer to three months. Anyway, I've had them for months and I'm pretty happy with them. So yeah.